So as you have told rightly that it's one of the most common cancers across the globe uh, in terms of the incidence as well as in terms of the mortality associated with this cancer. So uh, if we look at the Globocon data for it, you can see in among the eight standardized incidence rate and the mortality rates among the men, it is the fourth most common. And also among the women, it is also the third most common cancer that is common as well as morbid. And if you look at both the sexes along, it still ranks fourth in, in the incidence of for it. What are the various factors that are associated with increased or the decreased risk of colorectal cancer? The increased risk of the colorectal cancer, which is associated with lack of physical activity, the consumption of the red meat, obesity, cigarette smoking, and alcohol use. The decreased risk is usually with the multivitamins containing the folic acid, the aspirin, uh, NSAIDs, postmenopausal uh, hormone use, calcium supplementation, selenium, consumption of vegetables, fruits, and vegetable fibers. So when we discuss how this cancer develops, it involves a complex molecular pathogenesis. When the normal colon is exposed to uh, the various mutations, especially the KRAS mutation, the familial MSI mutations, the MMR mutation inactivation, uh, along the beta catenin exon pathway, they develop a sequential mutations. From the normal cell, it develops into an abnormal proliferation of the cells that's known as the adenomas. The further accumulation of the various mutations, like chromosomal instability defects, the P53 mutations, the inactivations of the microsatellites, the TGF or uh, TGF beta, and uh, the BAX genes, leads to a further accumulation of these mutations, the 18Q loss, the DPC4 loss, and further leads to the carcinoma. So we go by the nuts and to hit hypothesis that first there is a familial gene aberration, and then there is a somatic gene aberration which leads to the accumulation of these uh, instabilities for the adenomas to become carcinomas. So colorectal carcinomas, if we look at it, 15% of them are MSI instable. 85% are chromosomal instable. So that microsatellite instability or the MSI instability, most of them uh, have a hereditary association with it. That's known as the Lynch syndrome where 2 to 3% have a germline mutation in the MMR gene. The MMR genes consist of a complex of four most common of these, which includes the MLH1, the MSH2, the MSH6, and the PMS2. Among the sporadic ones, which have a MSI instability, it's basically the epigenetic silencing of the MLH1 by the hypermethylation of its promoter gene. Among those who have an 85% uh, chromosomal instability, less than 1% are familial. And that's because of the APC mutation, in which is germline. 85% are sporadic. That's either uh, APC, P53, DCC, KRAS, or loss of heterozygosity. Now, the most common pathway with which these uh, mutations develop and uh, leads to the aberrant conversion of an adenoma to a carcinoma is the WNT beta catenin pathway where the WNT receptor at the transmembrane location for the uh, cell goes and uh, binds with the exon uh, which further uh, down regulates the APC the beta catenin pathway which further leads to the transcription of the target genes that is cmix cyclin D inhibiting the proteasomal degradation. The various somatic mutations in colorectal cancers are KRAS mutation, which are around 40%, uh, the PIK3CA mutation around 20%, the BRAF around 15%, the NRAS around 9%, HER2 new around 9%, the CTNB around 5%. These are the oncogenes or the proto-oncogenes. The tumor suppressor genes, which are most commonly mutated, is the APC gene. That's 95% of the cases. The TP53, which is around 60% 60, 60 of the cases, the SMAT4, the FRW7, the SOX9. 
so somatic mutations also tend to concurrently occur with uh, the the germline variations and these all tend to cause down regulation of the receptor tyrosine kinase pathways leading to a cell cell proliferation uh, proliferation and progression of these now the molecular classification of colorectal carcinoma it is divided into four pathways it's basically uh, how it is hereditary linked with it whether it's a chromosomal instability pathway whether it's a mismatch repair pathway whether uh, it's a hybrid pathway or whether it's a serrated uh, cimp pathway so if the chromosomal uh, we we look at the methylated status of that island if it is negative uh, and uh, the msi stable uh, status is stable the chromosomal instability is present it is a chromosomal instability pathway that is uh, that can be either hereditary or sporadic most of the time the keras mutation is present in this chromosomal instability pathway the braf mutation is negative the mlh status is normal and the mgmt methylation is negative for the chromosomal instability pathway the second molecular classification where the mismatch repair pathway occurs again uh, the chromo uh, cpg island methylated phenotype is negative msi is usually unstable in these cases that's why it's a mismatch repair pathway the chromosomal instability is absent the keras mutation can be present can be negative the braf is negative the mlh mutation is usually present in this so uh, the mlh mutation and the msi status which is high in this pathway is the most common aberrant pathway in this next is the serrated or the cimp pathway here the cimp that is the island methylator phenotype is high the msi status is high or low depending upon whether it's a hereditary or the sporadic one and the braf mutation is the most common one that is quite common in this and the methylation status with the mlh1 is it's either partially methylated or completely methylated and the mgmt methylation is also quite common any of these three pathways if we don't get a categorical uh, combination with it whether the cimp is low the msi is low the chromosomal instability is present the keras mutation is present the mgmt methylation is present that comes into the hybrid pathway which is most commonly sporadic and very rarely familial so why the molecular uh, colorectal classification is uh, it's a very important because it's a very important biomarker status for us whether it's a cin pathway whether it's a cimp pathway whether it's a msi pathway because these are the pathways that tells us what mutations it is harboring inside whether it's harboring a keras mutation inside the braf mutation inside or the msi mutation inside and when these mutations also have a therapeutic prognostic and predictive significance so when the keras mutation is present you know that it's going to have a anti egfr resistant to it so wh whatever anti egfr therapy you're trying to give it to it it's not going to work much with the keras mutation that's a predictive factor that that this therapy is not going to uh, make a good impact on the patient with the braf mutation it's an aggressive disease that's why a prognostic effect for it now msi has a predictive as well as a prognostic effect because the ntpd1 efficacy is high in those who have an msi instability the 5fu efficacy is low in case of those who have a msi instability commonly associated with the lynch syndrome and that's why a lynch diagnosis is quite common in with them and therefore it has a predictive and prognostic significance for it